I'm Bruce Smith. I'm the dean of the John D. Odegaard School of Aerospace Sciences. On behalf of the Odegaard School, I'd like to welcome you all here today. There'll be other folks here that'll welcome you at every, every different level, so I won't go into anything else except to say thank you for joining us today. And welcome to the James Ray Hangar and the University of North Dakota uh, College of Aerospace Sciences. It's wonderful to see so many people and friends of general aviation and to be here this afternoon to celebrate our industry's many contributions to North Dakota. We appreciate you being here. I just finished writing a book, and the title of the book is called Nowhere But North Dakota. And it really is, a, is it captures a lot of what you see here today, is that you look and you say, could we, could we build the Odegaard School anywhere else in the country and be as successful as we are here? And the answer is no. And the reason why is because all of the elements that are part of our success exist here in North Dakota and nowhere else. I've, I've asked the people who are the sponsors of this program if they've ever been to a rally. First of all, it's had this many people, and they said Dallas was pretty big, but Dallas has got a few more people to draw from than we do. And, and the ones that draw, both your U.S. Senators, your U.S. Representative, the Lieutenant Governor, and in addition to that, the, the leaders that are part of the community and the state. There's representatives here from the State Board of Higher Education, from the other colleges within North Dakota. There's, there's people here that represent the highest levels of the University of North Dakota, our state and legislatures, our legislators, both the senators and representatives. And you'll find out later how many there are here because Senator Holman will probably name each one by name. So you'll, you'll see that it doesn't happen anywhere else but here. And you're a part of that, and that's, we really appreciate that. We're very excited to have the senators, Hoven and Cadcamp, Congressman Kramer, Lieutenant Governor Wrigley, to talk about general aviation. Today, you'll hear about the general aviation industry and the positive impact it has on North Dakota. And certainly, you can see that just in what you see in general aviation that sits out on the ramp here in Grand Forks, where we have over 120 general aviation aircraft and fly 116,000 flight hours a year. It's critical to the, the overall success of the region and certainly the upper Midwest. The Midwest has a, a critical role in the manufacturers of aircraft, and not only the ones that we use, but the ones that are across the board, and you'll hear from them today. Um, just as a little bit of administration, at the end we'll be drawing names of four student prize winners. You must be present to win and show your student ID. And after the program, our, our speakers will be here for a few minutes to uh, be a part of your audience so you can meet them and greet them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So again, thank you for being here. This is a place where there's nowhere but North Dakota could pull this off, and, and we're very happy that you're a part of that. Thank you. Have a seat. Good afternoon, and welcome to Grand Forks of the University of North Dakota. My name is Tom DiLorenzo, and I'm the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at UND. I bring greetings from President Kelly, who could not be here today, but fittingly is on an airplane somewhere in the great blue yonder. I'm joined here today by my colleague, Susan Walton, UND's Vice President for University and Public Affairs. Where's Susan? Right there. We're delighted to have GAMMA, the General Aviation Manufacturers Association, on campus to help us celebrate the aviation industry. Everyone on the platform will be introduced, but I would like to especially welcome Senator Hoven, Senator Heitkamp, Congressman Kramer, and Lieutenant Governor Wrigley, who are so committed to the citizens of North Dakota and who have a special place in their hearts for Grand Forks and UND. Thanks for being here today. 
I'd also like to mention our local legislators. I saw Ray Holmberg. Ray, where is Ray? And would all of our local legislators please wave so that we can thank you for all of your efforts on behalf of the, uh, the city of Grand Forks in UND. <laughs> Kirsten Diederich, the chair of the State Board of Higher Education is here, over there. And John Richmond, one of the presidents of the university system is here. And also I saw Mr. North Dakota Commerce, Al Anderson. Where's Al? Great, thanks for being here. We appreciate everyone being here. <laughs> UND has a special connection to this industry. We began 45 years ago with two planes and a dream. And now we have the largest civilian general aviation fleet in the world. This year alone, we will fly more than 115,000 flight training hours. And we're unique in operating a research jet that flies all over the world and is engaged in all kinds of atmospheric research. Our, our safety record is so good that the FAA selected our program to develop a model safety management system. At UND, we are constantly exploring the leading edge of the aviation industry. In fact, UND was the first university to develop an unmanned aircraft systems academic program and the first one to graduate students with specific degrees in that field. We are proud of the national and international reputation of our aviation program, which focuses on graduating students who gain a strong liberal arts background as they earn their wings. We are also proud of the John D. Odegaard School of Aerospace Sciences Aviation-Related Academic and Research Programs, and you met earlier the Dean of the School, Bruce Smith. And we are equally proud of the other academic programs in the college, Atmospheric Sciences, Computer Science, the Earth System Science and Policy Program, and Space Studies. UND's work in aviation, UAS training and research, uh, is truly a collaborative effort. The university's other colleges and schools also participate in research with undergraduate, graduate, and professional students. Arts and sciences, business and public administration, education and human development, engineering and mines, law, medicine, and health sciences, and nursing and professional disciplines. We are proud of our programs, our faculty, staff, and students, and of our North Dakota heritage. And this collaboration also extends to our work with industry and the entire Grand Forks community. In fact, many of our partners are represented here today. Because of your interest and support, we can better educate our students and strengthen UND's contributions to the state, the nation, and the industry. This is an exceptional university in a wonderful community and we are at a defining moment in the history of this school, North Dakota, and the world. And again, we are delighted to host Gamma for this great event today. And now, I'd like to introduce Peter Bunce, who is the President and CEO of General Aviation Manufacturers Association. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Tom. First of all, I'd like, like to ask you all Come on, let's gather, gather in, come on closer. Don't be afraid of the cameras here, because these are fun. This is the 11th rally, actually the 12th rally we have done in the United States in the last five years. Why do we do these? Well, after the economic downturn, we figured out very quickly that there was a lot of folks that wanted to talk negatively about general aviation. And why would you do that when you have an industry that produces 1.2 million jobs in this great country that contributes to the U.S. economy over $500 billion a year and is one of the greatest industries for exports throughout this planet. So we got together and we said, what's the best way to do that? Well, it's to get our federal, state, and local legislators, together with the press, to be able to talk to the most important people, the true VIPs, which are the people in this industry that make it so viable, so healthy, but it's exceptionally wonderful for me today to be able to talk to so many young people, which is truly our seed corn for the future. 
And boy, what a time this is, and what a great place to celebrate that at. UND, the largest aviation university on the planet, when you look out on that ramp and you see all of the aircraft flying each and every day in some tough weather, and some great weather like today, but then now with this growing center of excellence, we have an unmanned aerial systems. And to be able to be one of the five test sites and be at the vanguard of this new technology. And when we classify aviation, there is commercial, the airlines, there's military, and then everything else is general aviation. And that's exactly where this new technology of unmanned aerial systems will lie. So the future is tremendously bright and we're very excited to have you all be a part of it. And we're gonna have some fun today. I want to acknowledge special guests that come to us from the state legislature. We have State Senator uh, Ray Holmberg here and State Representatives uh, Chuck uh, Doshin, Lois Delmore, Curtis Crone, Gail uh, Mooney, Kylie Overson, and Mark Sanford. We also are very honored to have with us uh, Rod Brecken, who is the chairman of the North Dakota Aviation Council, and J.B. Lindquist, who's the chairman of the North Dakota Aeronautics Commission. Thank you for joining us. And here at UND, we've had some special help. Those of us that have been in aviation our whole lives, I was a military aviator, had a chance to fly fighters for my career, and even in military aviation, you quickly learn about the name Odegaard. It permeates all of aviation, and to have a school named after John Odegaard is, is truly spectacular. But then here at a school where 1,500 students representing 20 different countries are out here flying each and every day, that is exciting stuff for an industry that spreads our products throughout this planet and a planet that's growing up to recognize how important general aviation is. We, are, we want to definitely thank uh, Bruce Smith and his colleagues, uh, Jan Olson, Chris Noss, Don Dubuque, and Peter Johnson here from UND that have really helped make this uh, happen. And then we'd also like to recognize uh, Lieutenant Colonel Clarence Carroll, who represents the Ar Army ROTC detachment here at UND, and all of the military veterans. Our companies are very committed as we bring our troops back home from Afghanistan and conflicts overseas with these tremendous skills to bring them into aviation because we need to repopulate not only pilots but engineers, mechanics, and our factory workforce that are building these great machines. So educators become very important to us. Today we also have the president of Northland Community and Technical College, uh, Ann Tempty, and also John Richman, uh, the president of North Dakota State College of Science. So it's wonderful to have them here. And then at the high school level, which is very important to us because where we want to light that spark is in junior high and high school. I had a chance to talk to uh, some of the young people that uh, came in in Dougie today that had a great ride and be able to find out what they want to do. And they're all over the spectrum, and that's exciting for us. So uh, Alan Bergand and uh, David Grandall, Thank you very much for being involved in getting the kids up here from West Fargo High School. Each year, Gamma hosts an aviation design challenge where we have kids go and redesign a sportsman aircraft, and the winning team gets to go out to Arlington, Washington for an all-expense-paid trip to build an aircraft in two weeks. And we're very excited to have many uh, North Dakota high schools be participatory in that event, and uh, we're sending out software uh, as we speak. The last year's team uh, won from Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm hoping that a school from, a high school from this great state will win it in this next year's competition. So as we, as we have done these, one of the most valuable things that we've been able to do is the themes that are, that are brought forward to our elected officials really go back and can affect legislation in Washington, D.C. And as you know, in both chambers of Congress, there are different committees. And each year, we have appropriations for different uh, parts of the federal government. But each and every year, that, that is coupled with authorization legislation. But the appropriations process is, is where money is granted. And for us that work in this industry, funding the engineers that provide the services to be able for us to make aircraft and to run flight operations like this are very important. So it's an honor for me 
to introduce our first guest speaker, which is Senator John Hoven, who serves on that Appropriations Committee. Now, it's also special for us to be able to note that every member of the North Dakota congressional delegation is a member of the General Aviation Caucus. And these caucuses have pro provided great insight to congressional staffs and the federal agencies about the importance of this industry. So Senator Hoven has been one of our champions, and it's an honor to introduce Senator John Hoven right now to you. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. It's an honor to be here, and uh, I know you acknowledged our state legislators, but to, uh, to all our state legislators, uh, to Senator Holmberg, who chairs the Appropriations Committee in our uh, Senate, North Dakota Senate, and to all the legislators that are here, thanks for being here. Thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for your support of the University of North Dakota and, of course, uh, the, uh, the support for aviation, uh, the John D. Odegaard School of Aerospace and Aviation, uh, and for all that we're trying to do uh, to make sure that Grand Forks is absolutely the center for aviation and, and aviation technology development in the country. And there's no question uh, we're making that happen. Today's a great example, uh, but it's one of many examples of the exciting things that are going on in the Grand Forks region in aviation. Now, for you young people, if you want a great education related to a future in aviation, aviation technology, unmanned aerial systems, or any other aspect of aviation, you know where to go, right? Right here, Grand Forks. Because we're creating that future here today. And whether it's uh, the education or the jobs, the careers, the exciting new careers in aviation and aviation technology, right here in the Grand Forks region. There's no doubt about it. So it's, it's uh, very appropriate that we have Gamma here today. I want to thank our Gamma partners, Apario, Syria, uh, Cirrus, Piper, and UTC Aerospace uh, for being members of Gamma and for uh, helping host this great event. I want to thank uh, Senator Heidkamp, uh, Congressman Kramer, and our guest congressman, Congressman Sam Graves from uh, Missouri, who's a, a pilot and I guess a stunt pilot to boot. Uh, leader of the Aviation uh, Caucus uh, in, in the House of Representatives. Great to have uh, him here as well, and of course, Lieutenant Governor uh, Drew Wrigley. I know we've got a lot of other dignitaries, and I, and I believe that uh, in the course they'll all be introduced and speak, but we appreciate having all these dignitaries here. Most of all, we appreciate you, and we appreciate you young people not only coming here today, but getting involved at the high school level in aviation. How great is that? Um, you're all about the future. You're already far better at almost any aspect of technology than old guys like me. And uh, you're going to be a big part of uh, what we're creating here that uh, is so important for our country and beyond. And it's not just important in terms of jobs, and economic activity, but also national security, right? I was just listing out all the different partners that we've put together uh, in the, UA, the Northern Plains UAS test site, which we have here today, that are part of uh, this aviation future we're building. I mean, obviously, it starts with UND's uh, Odegaard School of Aerospace, but you've got also Northland Community and Technical College, which has great aviation technology programs. Uh, I want to thank President Tempty for being here today with us. Our UND UAS Center of Excellence, right? Back in about 2005, through our uh, Center of Excellence program, we started when I was governor. We partnered with then uh, Senator Byron Dorgan at the federal level and UND Aerospace, uh, Dean Bruce Smith, and uh, this great school of aviation, and started a UAS Center of Excellence. And people weren't quite as familiar with UAS back then. I know it doesn't seem very long ago, 2005, but we weren't talking about predators and Global Hawk and the amazing role they're now playing in defense of our country. So again, another example of this university on the cutting edge. And now we're building on that with the Northern Plains test site, one of six test sites for UAS in the country. In 2011, I was able to author legislation which we passed 
that required that the FAA authorize setting up six test sites in the nation to develop UAS technology, unmanned aerial systems, RPA, remotely piloted aircraft, and what? Fly them in the national airspace. We're flying these things all over the world. Our military is flying unmanned aircraft, RPAs, remotely piloted aircraft, all over the world. But where are they not flying them? In the United States. We have to develop concurrent airspace use, where we fly manned and unmanned aircraft in the same, same airspace. And we have to do it because we must maintain our aviation technology leadership in the world. It is vital. It is vital for the future of our country, for all the job creation and the economic growth reasons that we'll talk about here today and that we're working on, but it is also vital for our national security. Look what's going on in the world today. Think about that technology that's being developed here with all these partners and the global reach it has. Pretty exciting for you young people looking for a career. And we've got the jobs here. We've got the education, we've got the training, we've got the technology development, we've got the research and development, we've got the partners, we've got the jobs. We've got the future, we have the careers, and we want you to be a big part of it. Think about Grand Sky. Grand Sky's initiative. First of its kind technology park on the Grand Forks Air Force Base. The anchor tenant, Northrop Grumman, leading the way forward in the development of unmanned aircraft, unmanned aircraft technology, and flying it in concur concurrent airspace, commercial use, military use, the whole gamut. And I got a lot more here, but I'm going to stop because we got a lot of speakers. But I don't even have to follow my notes, which I didn't, because once you start talking about the future of aviation, you're talking about Grand Forks, and it is exciting. It's fantastic. I look over there and see people like Barry Batchelder. They're developing stuff that nobody's even seen or heard of yet. But it's going to be developed here. And it's going to be an amazing part of our future. And it's going to be just like this. Just like this. It wasn't very long ago, nobody had any concept that we'd be carrying these types of devices and their capabilities in our pocket. And that everybody out there has probably got one, or if you're like Senator Tom Campbell from Grafton, you got two or three. That's what's being developed right here today. Pretty exciting stuff. You not only can be part of it, you can make it happen. Have a great day. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Senator. Senator talked about all of the technology that this state is a part of. But to be able to make that technology a reality, manufacturers have to be able to produce it. And what we have in a bureaucracy is sometimes the bureaucracy tends to overregulate or make it too hard for manufacturers to get product to market. So last year, the Congress passed a standalone bill called the Small Aircraft Revitalization Act. And I'm very proud to say that Senator Heidi Heitkamp was a co-sponsor of that legislation in the United States Senate. And why is that so important? That technology that Senator Hoven just talked about has got to be allowed to permeate quickly into the industrial complex or we lose our leadership. And our military has given us the leadership in unmanned aerial vehicles. Our whole history over the last 100 years has given this nation leadership in all of aerospace. But if we overregulate, we actually defeat safety. And so I'm very proud that Senator Heitkamp was one of the co-sponsors. And this bill passed unanimously in the House and Senate, one of the only substantive bills that passed without one dissenting vote and was signed into law last Thanksgiving. Senator Heitkamp works on the Ag Committee, which is also very important to us in general aviation and Homeland Security. We are all tied together, so it's an honor for me to introduce Senator Heidi Heitkamp. So much to say in so little time, and so I'm going to focus on a couple things. First off, we would not have general aviation in our state or anywhere in this country if it weren't for the tremendous volunteers, the people who every day keep their local airports open, who advocate for general aviation, and I will tell you that 
Nowhere in the country, and I can say this with a great deal of certainty, is there more advocacy, more passion than the state of North Dakota for general aviation. Better volunteers you will never find for general aviation. I was at the Mandan Airport when we uh, dedicated the new airstrip there, which is a great regional outlet as well, coming with, uh, with uh, Bismarck. And I had, got to have a ride with Toby. I don't know if Toby's around here somewhere. Might be Algar, there he is. He's getting, now he's turning red. Um, I have to tell you, you know, I recently had, a, had an opportunity to, <laughs> he is turning red. I recently had an opportunity to um, spend some time uh, uh, coming to North Dakota uh, into Indian country with the president on Air Force One. But just a week before that, I got a ride on Boomer with Toby and people kept asking me, how was your ride? And I said, oh, it was just wonderful. Toby and I pulled the canopy down, and we followed the Missouri River. And they kind of get this blank look, and they went, I'm at Air Force One. I said, oh, no, the ride I thought was great was the ride with Toby. Um, thank you so much, and, and thank you so much for your continued involvement in our state, because it wouldn't work without volunteers. Um, but I'm going to focus my attention today on you young people and what you need to do to prepare yourself for the future in our country. And I don't mean to get all preachy on you, but I want you just to turn around. There's a guy in the back there, his name's Terry. He's got a blue shirt on. Yep, it's you. And you see him back there? I don't know if you guys can see him. Guess what he's doing? He's designing that jet out there. He's designing that jet out there. That's not easy work. It's important work because he's got to consider not only the aerodynamics and all of the other things, he's got to consider safety. But he told me every day he gets up with joy in his heart for the work that he does. But he didn't... <laughs> and you think about that. You think about what's in your future. And you think about what you're going to leave behind, especially when you're our age what you're going to leave behind. And when you can say, I left behind the design of the next shuttle or the next uh, uh, movement to the Mars, or I left behind great aviation, I left behind something, something of importance that people will look at hundreds of years from now and say, that made a difference. So you have to think about what's going to prepare you today to be part of that great experiment. And I congratulate all of you because you took the first step by coming here by volunteering, but it's hard study. And over at that, that table over there is North Dakota STEM. That's the kind of education that we need more and more young people to consider. Technology, engineering, mathematics. You think about it. You think about how critically important that is, not just to your future, but the future of this country, if we're going to stay on the tip of the spear in terms of technology to make our country, uh, to make that next generation in our country still the most innovative, entrepreneurial generation and country in the world. That's how we stay ahead. And so I want to encourage you all to um, participate, to think about those careers, to think about the opportunity that those careers will give you, not just in general aviation, not just uh, in manufacturing uh, aircraft, but any kind of work that you're going to do. That's where the jobs are. And so please take a look at it. And all of you who represent companies, support the effort, support the education system regarding education, because if we aren't training these kids, if we aren't training the workforce of tomorrow, we'll get left behind. And that's not who we are in the United States of America. So thank you for letting me participate. Thank you, kids, for coming. Thank all of the educators here who make a difference. And thank the, the great volunteers and the great people who believe in general aviation in North Dakota. Thank you, Senator Heitkamp. I mentioned earlier how well positioned the North Dakota congressional delegation is in Congress to be able to support aviation. And Congressman Kevin Kramer is no exception. In his first term as a legislator in the U.S. House of Representatives, he's been very active on the science committee. And to all of us, we know cutting aviation is cutting edge science. But before he came to the legislature, he also worked very hard to be able to recognize World War II veterans and to support the Rough Rider Honor Flight 
organization to be able to get veterans to the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C., and, and we thank him for that. Aviation got them there, but that great generation is what allowed us the privilege to be able to fly these great airplanes and keep this country free. So it's an honor for me to introduce Congressman Kevin Kramer. Thank you. I just love it when the organizers build a standing ovation in to the crowd. But I feel, I feel a little bit bad. We all get to sit down, which is why we can talk so long, and you're just having to stand there and listen. So I appreciate the attention. I, I very much appreciate being here with my friend, Lieutenant Governor Wrigley. Senators, good to see you. Where, what have you been doing all August? Um, but I have to tell you, the, the, best, the best of the best, really, is to be here with my friend, uh, Congressman Sam Graves, um, or as we like to call him, Mr. Chairman, um, because Sam, as you can see, I'm usually outnumbered two to one. It's very nice to have two congressmen in the room at the same time as our two senators. Not that I can't handle it, but I just, but I have a question about one of our senators. Did he show you a Blackberry? Was that, did you show them a Blackberry, Senator? I carry two iPhones, just so you know. Um, cutting edge, remember? Um, and, and to be with, with Tony Grinberg, a former state senator who, Tony and I did a lot of battle together, and he's going to talk, I know, about one or two policies. But two that come to mind right away, of course, was, was the fact that way back before all of this, there was a, a vision, and that vision required a foundation. And that foundation was liability reform. And Tony led the charge on that, and we'll let him elaborate a bit. And that liability reform made uh, aviation manufacturing the target industry. We also, uh, well, he, while I was economic development director and Tony, a uh, chairman of, uh, of the committee, the, an interim committee worked on developing uh, the aggregated resources of commerce into one agency that Governor Hoven uh, was uh, wise enough to, to form when he formed the Commerce Commission and great to have our commissioner with us today. Well, there's a lot of fun work going on in the Science, Space, and Technology Committee relative to what you're all here to celebrate and acknowledge today. I have to be honest, though, right up front, and tell you that when I was uh, first elected, Chris and I, my wife Chris, who's with me today, uh, we went to Washington for orientation. I was at a reception when this gentleman walks up to me with an envelope. The gentleman was Congressman Lamar Smith, the chairman of the Science, Space, and Technology Committee. I've maybe never told you this story, Sam, but Lamar came up to me and he handed me this letter and he said, Kevin, this is an invitation to join my committee. I want you to seek a position on my committee. And I thought, wow, I didn't know it worked like that. I thought, you know, these were tough things. And he said, I said, what committee is it? Thinking it would be certainly one of the, you know, top committees. Maybe I'd get right on Ways and Means. Wouldn't that be exciting? Energy and commerce, you know, agriculture. He said, it's the Science, Space, and Technology Committee. And I went, oh, no wonder you invite people. And then, it, then I got on the committee. And I have to tell you, I have never enjoyed committee assignments so much as I enjoy that committee. And the reason he asked me to be on it was partly because of what's going on right here. He was familiar with the Odegaard School and the, uh, the exciting things happening in aviation and space studies at North Dakota. He also wanted me to know he was looking for somebody who could, who had some uh, background in cross-examining technical witnesses in the uh, oil and gas and uh, coal industries and clean coal technology industries. It's, it served me so well that I hired Randy Richards to be one of my field directors here in North Dakota, put an office right here at the Center for Innovation on the campus of the University of North Dakota so we could be directly connected and be part of not only the efficiencies but the synergies of what's going on or what's going on right here at, uh, in Grand Forks. This really is very cool to see all you young people. You know, one of the big challenges right now that North Dakota is enjoying, and I have to tell you, it's never been so cool to be from North Dakota as it is right now. The three of us get to wake up every morning, every morning, that ev knowing that every one of our other uh, colleagues that are from somewhere other than North Dakota have to read about North Dakota in the Wall Street Journal before they see us on the floor. That, and then they go like this, how is it possible? How is it possible? Well, one of the big challenges we have in this incredible economy, of course, is workforce. But what you represent is the opportunity to grow the workforce right here, to grow it, to train it, to prepare it, and to keep it. And then for that to become an attraction to your peers from around the country. 
It's very cool. It's very cool, and we're grateful that you're here and that you have an interest in this exciting new economy. We've done some things in Congress, and it's nice to, that you pointed, point out that we actually have passed some bills. It's best when you can pass them with no opposition. We need to come up with more good ideas like that, you guys, uh, that we can pass without opposition. Um, but we've done some additional things in the House that I think position this industry pretty well. We recently passed some tax extenders, making them permanent. One of the most important, important ones, I think, for this industry and for the future of it is that we made permanent the research and development tax credit. So that rather than extending it every two years, which has been happening for about 30 years, um, we can put it in permanent law and ensure then that, that the innovators and the researchers and the developers know for certain that there's this backstop, this help, that helps mitigate a little bit of the risk that will find the newest technology and advance it. Some other things that we made permanent in, in the House side anyway so far in the tax code is we made permanent uh, 179 expensing. That doesn't sound very sexy unless you're a CPA, but it's very important to people that have a lot of maintenance in their business, right? And probably bonus depreciation. We made bonus depreciation permanent. Why is that important to general aviation? It's important because, of course, aircraft are one of the things, private aircraft, general aviation aircraft, are one of the things that are very, very important personal property that require heavy capital investment. And the ability to expense a half of that in the, in the year that you, that you make the acquisition is critical. It can make all the difference in the world in, in the manufacturing and the sale of things like aircraft. We've done some other things in, with regard to research and development in the Science, Space, and Technology Committee, trying to, to move away some of the burdens and some of the walls that get in the way, especially the excessive cost of administration of, uh, of some of the grant programs. As much as 50% of a grant, a research grant, can be used up in facilities and administration. And so the Science, Space, and Technology Committee has taken on some of that. We've done some oversight hearings trying to get a better understanding of why that is the case and trying to pass some legislation. We have one, one piece of legislation we introduced, marked up last March, is called the FIRST Act. The FIRST Act removes some of those barriers and it got rolled into another uh, larger bill that, uh, that we were able to pass in the House earlier this year called the Research and Development Efficiency Act. So we're very active in it. It's, it's great. I will tell you that the one thing about uh, being the only member of the House of Representatives from the entire state of North Dakota is that I have the advantage of carrying this brand, this brand that everybody knows about, everybody's curious about, everybody's asking about. And while generally the first question is, how in the world did you get to a million barrels of oil per day, it allows us, as we represent you in Washington, to tell the rest of the story. And what we're experiencing right here today is a big part of the rest of the story. Thanks for being part of the story, and thanks for being such an inspiration to us. God bless you all. Thank you, Congressman Kramer. Congressman Kramer mentioned Sam Graves. He's our pilot in Congress. He is the co-chair of the General Aviation Caucus in the House of Representatives. And when we started that caucus, he was the man we, we went to and said, we've got to get something going to be able to tell our story uh, to the colleagues in the House of Representatives, and then that extended later on to the Senate. It's the largest caucus in the House of Representatives. But also, he represents the Small Business Committee, and small businesses are what general aviation is all about. We've got large manufacturers throughout the country, but really the engine of this industry is the op entrepreneurs, is the Warren Peaches out, out in Minot that's out there pumping gas to all of those aircraft flying through the Bakken fields. It's Barry Batsler, Senator Hoban uh, mentioned earlier, who, took, who has taken many companies in precision ag and now extended that to a pario here uh, down in Fargo to be able to provide us that technology that allows us to see unmanned aerial vehicles that you normally wouldn't be able to see with your eyes. And that'll be critically important for us to move forward. But I think I've had the opportunity to be able to be with Sam Graves at many aviation events throughout the nation, and there's nothing that jazzes him more as it does me to be able to see young people and talk to young people and be able to share the passion that, that we mutually have for this industry. So it's an honor for me to introduce Congressman Sam Graves.
Well, it's an absolute thrill to be here uh, in North Dakota. Uh, it really is, and I'm no stranger to uh, uh, North Dakota aviation. Uh, I am honored to be able to fly for a group called the Texas Flying Legends Museum, and we summer our planes in Minot at the Dakota Territory uh, Air Museum. So we get, to, we get to fly in myself and some of our other pilots, including Warren Peach and Casey Odegaard. Um, we get the ferry planes in and out uh, of North Dakota, uh, doing air shows around the country uh, all year long. So uh, I've learned firsthand the rich history that you all have, uh, aviation history that you have in, in North Dakota. And I've also gotten to witness firsthand to the incredible amount of support uh, that North Dakota gives general aviation, the general aviation community uh, throughout the country. It's, uh, I mean, it is really refreshing uh, to be able to see that because aviation, not only is it work, but it is a tremendous amount uh, of fun uh, as well. Uh, I am chairman of the General Aviation Caucus in the House of Representatives. We have 250 members there. The, uh, uh, the magic number is 218. But what we're able to do is we, we're able to rally all of those members. We're able to mobilize very, very quickly when legislation comes up as it affects general aviation. In aviation, we have technology that, to be quite honest with you, um, doesn't change much. But we also have technology that changes so rapidly um, it's hard to keep up with it. And unfortunately, with that comes regulation. So we want to be able to educate. And that's what we spend our time doing, is educating uh, all the time members who don't really understand aviation. I'm proud to say uh, Representative Kramer is one of the top uh, advocates in uh, the House of Representatives when it comes to doing work for uh, the GA caucus. But uh, we get to do a lot of things. We're working on third class medicals or trying to take a new approach uh, to third class medicals right now uh, in terms of being able to self-certify. Um, we're working on the next FAA reauthorization, which is going to encompass all of those areas out there that are going to uh, be regulatory or determine how we fly, how we're able to, uh, uh, to work in aviation. And there, it does have such an impact. Um, it, contributes, uh, it contributes about $150 billion to the economy, to the transportation uh, economy. It's 1.2 million jobs. Uh, so there's a huge uh, amount of impact there. But we do those things that are very important, but we also get to do some fun things. One of the things we're doing right now, the Aviation Caucus is working on the celebration of VE Day, uh, which will be next year in Washington, D.C. on May 18th. We're going to have a parade of those planes that helped win the war in World War II. And one of the reasons I'm bringing this up is I want your senators to hear this. We're trying to get the entire Congress and Senate behind it. Um, but we're going to have everything from that L-4 Cub up to B-29 I'm um, doing a parade down the mall uh, with Show Center being the World War II uh, Memorial. So we get to do some fun things. And I guess if I had one message to the young people out here is because general aviation is a lot of work, there are a tremendous amount of responsibilities that go into it, whether you're working on airplanes or you're flying airplanes um, or you're, you're doing all of the variety of things that goes along with aviation. There's a lot of fun uh, involved in it, too. And don't hesitate for a minute to take your head out of the panel once in a while and look outside and see the clouds. Um, because it's, it's a lot of fun, and you want to be able to, uh, uh, to enjoy it uh, along the way. So um, it's to see the young people and what the initiatives that are taking place here uh, in Grand Forks and North Dakota overall, and what is being talked about being replicated uh, across your state. And for that matter, you've got other states that are taking a very close look at what you're doing uh, with the young people and with some of the uh, uh, education opportunities, and they're wanting to replicate that uh, in their states. And I would like nothing more than to see this spread uh, throughout, the, uh, uh, throughout the country. But with that, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, we've got an air show in, uh, uh, in Twin Cities, or Valley City, I take that back, Valley City uh, this weekend, which I will be at uh, as well, and our team will be at, but I uh, hope everybody can make it down there, and I hope you can make it to the Dakota Territory Air Museum sometime uh, in Minot. But thank you for letting me be here. Well, thank you, Congressman Graves. We talked about the impact that UND has internationally, but it doesn't stop there. Uh, when you take Jim Sweeney here from Fargo Jet Center and what he's done with his brother, of uh, traveling the world and being, being able to see how you can, you can really change weather to be able to help countries manage whether, it, whether it's hail falling or, or making it rain in certain parts of the world that need it, that's tremendous. But to be able to sell product all over the world, we have to have vehicles like the XM Bank. And I'm proud to say that this delegation here from North Dakota has been supporters, as has Congressman Graves, who's held uh, meetings with the Small Business Committee to be able to tell the importance. And, and I just want to mention, a company very close to you all, Spectrum Aeromed, 
here that that had some tough times after the recession really fell on some hard times and was nearly bankrupt and the way they came out of that situation was to be able to have XM financing so it's just not the Boeing's of the world it's out there it's small businesses especially in the aerospace sector to be able to tap into that financing great company like air tracker building ag aircraft in only Texas. Seven out of the eight aircraft that are on their production line right now are XM financed. So that becomes very important. And for, for us looking outward to this planet that needs aviation and wants aviation, that becomes very important. And I, I want to thank this delegation for your support with that. So as we turn to industry, I mentioned some of, some of the visionaries here. And when you have the, the first person I want to introduce is someone who was in 2011 the state legislator of the year. And Tony Greinberg, his name has been mentioned before, but he's taken over the, uh, Barry assigned him to handle the aviation portfolio for um, Apario, and he has been just a strong and passionate advocate to bring business to this state with his colleagues and other colleagues that you'll hear from later today within the Gamma family to be able to talk about the expertise and the quality workforce that is here in the great in this great state. So without further ado, Tony. Kevin, I, Kevin, I'd just like to say I have 55 days left before I become a former state senator. <laughs> thank you, Pete. Yeah, who's counting? That's right, who's counting? Pete, thank you. I, on behalf of Apario and a member of your board of directors, it's truly a privilege to work with Gamma on policy and issues supporting general aviation. You want to run a world-class organization, and we're very impressed. You know, um, many have talked about students, and I wanted to spend a few moments on students as well and the message. In 1979, two young high school graduates traveled to North Dakota State College of Science to enroll in the business aviation program. And during that fall semester, fall quarter, if you will, um, we captured a theme and built a float um, for the parade for the Wildcats. It was everybody loves a pilot. And we had a wonderful two years. We received our pilot's license. I'm mentioning Cal Scadberg, who's here with me, and um, I were the two students I'm referencing. We had a wonderful experience learning how to fly and creating a passion for aviation. And as students, as you are inspired here today, think about what you learn here today and moving forward, because 30 years, that was 30 years ago for Cal and I. We've come full circle from our friendship when we were college buddies, flying partners, to now colleagues at Apario. A vision and a passion, Barry Batcher was mentioned, um, the, the founder of the company, creating impact for avionics and aviation, safer skies, um, part of next gen and support from the Congress, et cetera. West Fargo, uh, 60 students from West Fargo schools are here today, a new program in aviation. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Jerry Stromberg and Bob Becklin. We talked about Bob and his leadership now with the UAS program. Jerry, Bob, and I are graduates of West Fargo High School. So we are pleased that West Fargo has taken a leadership position in creating a program around aviation. And again, think about what you're learning today and the opportunity as life's journey begins as you finish your college degree or as you finish up in high school and choose a career path if aviation is where you end up. We would um, hope you consider staying in North Dakota. And it wasn't long ago that we were losing people left and right in North Dakota. And we've talked a little bit today about what's changed. Everybody's talking about us, the Wall Street Journal. Um, largely, this has been by design, I would argue. Uh, we've had strong leadership, then Governor Hoven, many of the legislative colleagues that I've worked with over the years for 22 years are here. We had a plan. Congressman Kramer talked about the tort reform liability. We wanted to create more of a workplace, work front business climate for North Dakota, and we got it done. At little pieces, little tools, if you will, along the way on the journey. I see Kristen Diedrich is here, who's chairman of the State Board of Higher Education. I was asked to talk about why Apario is in North Dakota. It's easy to answer that with Barry's vision and commitment to North Dakota as a graduate of North Dakota State University, but I think I would also add, and Barry would agree if he were standing up here, it's about the people and the passion and our educated workforce. You know, in 1999, we started a journey with reforming higher education, creating partnerships, encouraging our campus presidents to take a leadership role with industry, funding centers of excellence, uh, creating opportunities and new technologies, which Pario was a part, Pario was a part of. 
with NextGen and ADSB. Um, it's just an exciting environment. So as you continue to learn here today, um, North Dakota has changed, and now people want to move to North Dakota, and we hope that you all stay here and create uh, opportunities for future generations. A little bit about Apario. Our devices are in all the trainer rec aircraft at University of North Dakota. Our flight data monitoring, Vision 1000, is a very effective tool for flight data monitoring and training, as well as our partnership with UND and NDSU in creating an ADSB platform for bringing weather and traffic on an iPad into general aviation. Those are just glimpses of two products that we are very proud of and are selling worldwide. We have markets in Australia, China, uh, Russia, France, Europe, um, Brazil, uh, all made here in North Dakota as part of a pro-business climate and a policy to embrace risk at the leadership level and to make a difference and hire young people. So I thank you again, and Pete, thank you for your leadership in making a difference. It's my pleasure now to introduce Pat Waddock, who is President and Chief Operating Officer of Cirrus. And everybody here in Grand Forks knows the commitment to Cirrus. And uh, Pat and I had the privilege to spend a day on Capitol Hill in May lobbying Congress for XM Bank and other, uh, other concepts important to aviation. I can tell you we had a great day. We worked hard. I think we had 12, 12 appointments like that working on the Hill. Pete knows how to work his, his volunteer staff and board. So with that, please welcome Pat. Well, um, thank you very much. Uh, it is uh, undoubtedly a pleasure to be here. Um, it's amazing how you're listening to all this and you're in the moment and you get inspired and how quickly you know why people say it's, you're going to end up going off script. So I'm going to end up going off script. Um, on behalf of Cirrus Aircraft, it is, like I said, it's really a pleasure to be here to represent Cirrus, but it's probably a better pleasure for me to represent the employees of Cirrus Aircraft. Could you guys raise your hands? That's cool. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, we, we can be kind of a rowdy bunch. I think I, I clapped maybe a little too soon and cut off uh, Senator Heitkamp, so appreciate that. But, um, uh, you know, obviously we're here to recognize exceptionalism in general aviation and what it's done to really reshape uh, the industry. Uh, revitalize it, but also kind of change our communities and change our lives. And probably most importantly, not just changing our own personal lives, but changing the lives of our customers. Because when we do that, when we actually change the life of a customer, then they want more. And then they come back for more. And that's what, like, uh, you know, uh, Senator Heitkamp uh, called out Terry, which I appreciate that, because he does amazing things. It allows us to have fun allows us to take new steps to do uh, new things. And so, um, you know, we can talk about um, lots of things around the ecosystem. Uh, aviation as a hub in the Northland, here in North Dakota, especially here in Grand Forks. But there's certain key ingredients that when I think back over time that really were the sort of the causal factors for making that happen. And those are the things, it's, it's the inspiration Really, it's the support that makes uh, things like aviation hubs work, makes uh, people excited about general aviation, and really allows us to imagine a very different and much more exciting future. Um, I'll share a quick story with you um, because it, it really highlighted, as I was out uh, with Terry at the jet, highlighted for me um, the inspiration in my life. It was, I think, 20 years ago uh, this year that I visited Grand Forks for the first time. Uh, I flew over here with my then fiance, and she has made it this long. We just set, uh, celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. And we flew over here in a 1970s wood and fabric Blanca Super Viking. And it was very noisy, and it was very tight, and back then she was a very nervous air traveler. And we started getting to know the Grand Forks area and North Dakota. And it was really special. It was really cool. Roll forward 20 years and a lot has happened. Come a long way. This morning I climbed into a SF-50 Vision Jet. Flew over to Grand Forks. Now I didn't have my wife with me, I had Terry. Um, but coming over here at 275 knots, and landing here on a beautiful day to be with a lot of friends 
was probably about one of the most special mornings I could imagine. And so it made me think back to a phrase that I think became a book that we used to talk about early on in the early days of Cirrus. What do we want to do? We want to have fun, make money, change the world. And when you can be part of an industry and a company that is doing those things, and when you're surrounded by the kind of enthusiasm and support, this is a big deal to have the whole delegation from Washington up here on the stage here in Grand Forks. These people care about what we're doing. They care about what we're dreaming about. They care about how they can help. I mean, really genuinely, having spent some time with these folks, they genuinely care about what allows us to have fun, make money, and change the world. So it's things like that that create aviation ecosystems. It's things like that that, for example, Cirrus, we've been able to deliver over 6,000 SR-20, SR-22, and SR-22Ts around the world. We've got over 500 people waiting in line for a vision jet. We're growing. We've got over 800 people in the company now and uh, 160 here in Grand Forks and just 60 new hires in the last year and in the next year another 150 new hires. We're investing in new equipment, added a new autoclave, non-destructive inspection equipment. We're investing in people. We're investing in the community. We're investing in ourselves and, our, and our, our, the people around us so that we can do the things that inspire us. So for you guys, now I was talking to folks that, young folks that came over in, uh, is it Dougie? So it's a Dougie's a big yellow DC, for, DC3 for those who haven't been outside. And I've never been in one. That would be really cool. I was trying to trade a ride, but uh, I'll have to try harder next time. You guys are pretty lucky to come over that way. But all of this is what allows us to, to be inspired. I hope this morning you guys were inspired. I hope you guys want to spend a career in aviation, because I will tell you, having spent 20 plus, 20, almost 30 years, I guess, now in it, it changed my life. It changed my life. I had a ton of fun. I'm having, gonna have more fun tomorrow. And uh, the way we look at it is, hey, uh, we got uh, two out of three for many years, and uh, maybe if we can uh, keep having our success and making money, that'll keep us uh, having fun for tomorrow. So uh, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I appreciate all the hard work from this team in Washington, at the state and local levels, uh, to really help us uh, pursue our dreams. It is. Uh, really, really, truly special. So thank you for allowing me to be here. With that, I would like to uh, introduce a, a colleague of mine. Uh, he's the president and CEO of Piper Aircraft. He's had a, a long and distinguished career, uh, not just at uh, Piper, but Raytheon, Beechcraft, and British Aerospace. Please welcome Simon Caldicott. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to start by, uh, first of all, thanking UND for hosting this very, very important event. Great job, and I really appreciate Bruce and, and Don and the team laying on such an event. Thank you. So what's a guy with a funny accent doing here who lives in Florida? Well, as Pat said, I've been in the industry 40 years this year. In fact, I started with British Aero, in fact, before British Aerospace with Hawker Siddeley Aviation. And it's a great, great career. And I'm really looking at you young students from, from West Fargo. There are great opportunities. I started just like Terry at the back as a design engineer designing jets. And I've had a lot of different opportunities during my career in manufacturing. And now I'm, I'm actually heading up one of the best known um, aircraft manufacturers in the world. Pipe has been around for 77 years, and it's an honor to be the head of that organization. So why, why am I here in, in North Dakota? It's very simple. I took over three years ago as the CEO, and one of the first things my team and I recognized is that there's an opportunity for Piper to help the growth and the need 
of another over half a million pilots in the next 20 years. And what better way to do it than to talk to the top flight schools in the nation? And we actually spent some time talking to UND about why we were missing out on that opportunity. We gained a lot from that, and we were able to rebuild our relationship, which is very important, because Piper has had a relationship with UND for over 30 years. In fact, it was back in 1987, the first order that UND placed with Piper Aircraft was for 250 aircraft. Now, to continue that relationship, in April of this year, we were pleased to announce that UND had selected our G1000, Garmin G1000 equipped Piper Seminoles for their multi-engine fleet of aircraft. And we'll be taking delivery here shortly of three brand new aircraft. In addition to that, they'll be taking, hopefully, a lot more over the next few years. What else is important? UND, as all my former speakers have said, actually has the best aerospace programs. And again, for you young students that are here today, the opportunities are endless. Whilst it's not just pilots we need, we need design engineers, we need manufacturing engineers, industrial engineers, buyers, we need people to sell products. It offers a lot of opportunity to all of you. Over the next 20 years, there will be a requirement for 600,000 aviation maintenance technicians. There'll be a requirement for 535,000 new pilots. About 40% of those are required in Asia. And it's, it's a nice comforting thing to know that the center of aviation is here in the United States and schools like UND are involved in training a lot of those students. There's great opportunity. It's great for the US economy. It's excellent for the infrastructure in aviation. And I'm honestly really proud to be a part of it and to be associated with UND. We appreciate the, the uh, support of the general aviation and GA jobs by the North Dakota Congressional Delegation, Governor Jack Dalrymple and Lieutenant Governor Drew Wrigley. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today and we'll now hand it back to Pete Bunce. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. The last three industry speakers are part of my board of directors and it's exciting for me to be able to have folks that are so passionate, they're aviators, they care about their industry, and they care about educating young people. And they also care about what our future looks like on the unmanned side of the house. And as I mentioned before, as we permeate the aviation system with unmanned aerial systems, they will be part of general aviation. We need to figure out how to integrate them. And that's why when you have a visionary lieutenant governor who's able to actually lead the coalition in the heartland of our nation to be able to say, okay, how are we going to work airspace cooperatively? How are we going to deconflict? How are we going to work with the other states to be able to get, and it's very fascinating that a group of lieutenant governors throughout the country form the Aerospace, St Aerospace States Association that go for promoting aerospace to all of you young people out there. It's an exciting time to be in aviation, and this is the epicenter of what's happening up, up here. And when you have a state where general aviation permeates the fabric and has for a long time, you can't do business in a state like this without having the capability of using aviation to get from one city to another. You cannot get people that get hurt out in a farm field and get them to excellent medical care without a runway nearby that you can get a life flight uh, aircraft in and out of to get them to a medical center of excellence. And it's inspiring lieutenant governors and state legislators that make it happen for all of us. So I, it is my honor to introduce Lieutenant Governor Drew Wrigley. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Thanks. Thank you very much. I was, Thank you. I was checking my lapel to see if my UND pin was still in place because 
Congressman Kramer couldn't get into UND, and every time I'm around him, he's always grabbing for my lapel pin. But he's got, he's got a pretty fancy lapel pin of his own, and he seems satisfied with that. It's great to be here with everybody. Especially want to thank the Congressman for coming in from Missouri. Sam's brother Todd and I served together as U.S. attorneys years ago, and I used to hear stories about Sam sleeping on his couch in his uh, congressional office. And I would like to thank Kevin for putting the image in our mind today of Team North Dakota in the bunkhouse they apparently live in, bunk beds and a futon when they wake up in the morning and talk about whatever they're talking about. We're going to get that out of our head. Team North Dakota's bunkhouse. Thanks. <laughs> it is, it's always fun to come back to my alma mater. I get up to university a lot. And I was just here a couple weeks ago, and the great dean uh, of our aviation school here, Dean Smith, was kind enough to walk me around the school and talk a little bit about uh, several things happening here. I was escorted that day by, by my uh, long, long time friend, Stephanie Odegaard, Ledoux, and it was fun to be going around and uh, watching Stephanie being treated like a queen everywhere here on campus. And uh, my wife, Kathleen, and Stephanie, her husband, Jay, have been friends for years, and it's, I'm just going to bring that up, because all you youngsters, look to the people that you're friends with, because you're stuck with them. Make good choices, for heaven's sakes. We're living in and we're working in the number one economy in America. In a lot of ways, it's one of the only, uh, well, there are a couple, but it's one of the few really strong economies in all of America, and we can take that for granted sometimes. But it's a blessing. We have to think about it every day and the opportunity that it produces. And in this number one economy in all of the nation, and by the way, when I was graduating from the university in 1988, they weren't talking about North Dakota's economy as the number one economy in America. They were talking about ways, what can we do to keep young people in the state? And there were times that the politicians at the time, they'd talk about things that almost sounded like they were trying to lock you up. They're like, what can we do to make them stay here? They're going to pay us to stay in the state. And that's no joke. Today, there is more opportunity in this state than in any state in the nation. And you're blessed by that. We're blessed by it. The reality is, in that number one economy in the nation, 10% of that economy relies on manufacturing. Interestingly, nationally, there is a continued retraction in manufacturing, but not so in North Dakota. Just the general aviation manufacturing slice of our manufacturing sector supports 700 direct jobs, and there's a lot more that are affiliated, $60 million in annual payroll, and there are a lot of other statistics. And there's a lot of reasons to be excited about it, but it isn't just money. It's not even importantly money. It's opportunity. Our economy in North Dakota is not simply the number one economy and all the other statistics and all the other publications that talk about how strong things are here. It's diverse. It's diverse and diversifying all the time. I think manufacturing is a great snapshot to that. And if you look across the room, there'll be somebody who fits into almost every category of that. People of vision. You say the name John Odegaard, you know a person of vision. I really enjoyed talking with Bruce that day. And Bruce is another person of vision, because you can't work at that school without that. People of vision. People who have expertise in design and engineering and bringing vision to reality. People who are technological innovators. Fancy way of saying they solve every problem c that comes up, because a lot of them do. I wish everybody here had been at the Melro plant a month and a half ago. Wasn't that something? Syl Melro got up that day, spoke to a crowd assembled to congratulate them on one million bobcats. And you think, well, that's great. This has always been a great piece of equipment. It was a crappy piece of equipment. Syl Melro told the story about the number of times they almost closed the whole thing down, the day they decided they were going to close the whole thing down. And instead, decades later, they're talking about number one million because someone solved the problem, a series of glitches in an important piece of equipment that is saving all sorts of time, energy, and doing important work all over the globe. It was invented to get chicken manure out of a small space on a farm. After the engineers, the people who work in the assembly lines, the skilled uh, labor, the folks who can figure out how to put things together and do it right, the people who can market those products around the region, the nation, and the globe, and the people who can sell those products. There's not a person in that that is anything other than and anything less than a link in a chain. 
That's what's important about a diverse economy. That's what's so exciting about it. There is a role for every single person with whatever passion that they have, especially in a state that devotes so many resources to education, K through 12 and higher education, every opportunity. I once said my only person who doesn't have a future in this state was my oldest daughter, Quinn, because she wanted to be a uh, marine biologist. She's changed her mind. The opportunity in North Dakota is unlimited. That's not a talking point. Every politician that you hear from, every, every business leader, every person working in this state who understands our state recognizes that and what it means. I'm a proud fourth generation North Dakotan. One of the things that I'm most proud about when I say that is because my wife and I are raising the fifth generation. And I look to the horizon and recognize it is a very, not only realistic possibility, it has become a probability and a blessing to say that maybe the sixth generation will come along and will be having that opportunity. You want to watch people ask, act goofy, watch Senator Hoven and Congressman Kramer play with their grandkids. Don't forget this, and I'll stop, because I, I've only been in politics four years, but I have learned that uh, you do have to sit down, even though you can say uh, everything's been said, but not by everybody, <laughs> especially when you're a little further down the speaking order there. Remember this, and I know that you're engaged and exciting uh, young people because you're here, and you, you, you came in here to stand in this hangar and talk to people about a really, really important component of our economy and of life in America and globally. But remember this, that you're being educated in, and other people here are working in, and other people are serving in, the greatest state and the finest nation on earth. And we believe that across the generations. Now it's kind of interesting, the country, the country is watching and feels that way too. That's where we live and that's where we work, and that's where our future is, in the greatest state and the finest nation on the face of the earth. And what's exciting about that also is that we are an example for something very important in the generation ahead. It's called national renewal, and it's needed. It's needed desperately. So we need you, every single person, in that link along the way. God bless every one of you for the choices you're going to make along that way, the energy that you're going to put into it. We'll see you up the road. Thanks very much. Well, thank you, Lieutenant Governor Wrigley. And thank you for all of our, our guests here today that have, have spoke about this tremendous industry. We do hope that you take some time, go over and be able to see these different displays and be able to find ab out about the career opportunities. Other great gamma companies, Cessna, United Technologies Aerospace, and all of the opportunities that are available in this great industry, and it's only growing. And to foster that, we have a little drawing that's going to go on, and we hope that the winners, uh, the four Folks that are picked uh, from this pool actually use their $250 to do something like buy ab gas rather than beer with it. So uh, I, would, I would ask the uh, North Dakota delegation to come on up there, Senator Hoven, if you'll draw the first name, and uh, we'll have a chance for them to exit the stage and uh, shake hands. Do I announce the names? Sure. Ryan Wheeler, UND. Ryan? You have to be present to win. No. No, must not be present. Um, Luke Warner. All right. John Hoven. No. no. <laughs> Vincent. Vincent Gow. Huh? Is Vincent here? Does that, okay. Does that mean Luke gets a picture of three members of the entire <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Carter Hall. Carter's over at the Red Pepper spending his money. Oh, oh, he's right there he is, Carter. All right. All right. Well, again, thank you for coming. Enjoy taking a look at the aircraft and go out and fly. Thank you.